Testing. Oh, right. There we are. All right. We're going to call this meeting uh, to order. I apologize. I was talking to a couple of uh, residents out there about uh, an issue for the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Everything's uh, good, but I want to give them a couple minutes. I apologize for being a few minutes, uh, right. a few minutes late. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Always a pleasure to see you, Vice Mayor, members of the Council, staff, members of the public. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, police Department, Volunteer Fire Department, Fire Department, always a pleasure to see you guys. With that, we'll call this meeting to uh, order. Would you call the roll, please, Russell? <laughs> Councilmember Jablonski? Here. <clears throat> Councilmember Fiskelli? Here. Councilmember Breakers? Here. Vice Mayor McKay? Here. Mayor Nelson? Here. We stand for the pledge, please. Okay, before we get started, Representative Rick Stark, I know he's not going to say uh, anything particularly because not a lot going on in Tallahassee, but it's always a pleasure to see a dear friend of the town of Southwest Ranches. We're fortunate uh, to have him as our representative in Tallahassee. Always a pleasure. Come by any time, Representative Stark. Okay, first on the agenda is public comment. Richard? Uh, we have two speakers tonight, uh, Mayor. First one is Jill Arnolofsky. Arnofsky. Good evening, Ms. Uh, Mayor, Council. I'm Jill Aronofsky, 5781 Southwest 188th Avenue. And I'm here tonight to speak to a major issue that's going to confront all of Florida in our waterways, our water systems, water lakes, rivers, whatever we have here and possibly even our land. The state of Florida is holding a meeting in Tallahassee on July 26th to discuss toxic chemical levels that they wish to increase in our water. And the vote is going to be the sometime in the first or second week of September. They didn't open any meetings here in South Florida. They're only holding it in Tallahassee. It was very secretive. Now, some of the chemicals, there's about 82 chemicals. Um, it's under Chapter 62302 and 62303. I gave each one of you a copy of the packet, which Andy was nice to help me with. All right, so you can read through it at your leisure because it's a lot of reading. All right, the major chemicals are benzene, which we all know they want to use for fracks, fracking. There's a cancer risk, and, and most of it uh, related to crude oil, gasoline, in motor vehicle exhaust, cigarette smoke, and there's a link between benzene and cancer. Its focus is mostly on leukemia and some blood dyscrasias and cancers. It evaporates in the air quickly and dissolves slightly in water. Dioxin is another chemical. And you might recognize it under the name Agent Orange, which they used in Vietnam War. And some people were either killed, maimed, or there were severe birth defects from that. So that's an unintentional byproduct of many industrial processes involving chlorine, as in uh, waste incineration, chemical and pesticide manufacturing, pulp and paper bleach, bleaching. It can cause cancer. It's highly toxic. The next drug, is, uh, the next chemical is aldrin, which is also known as dialdrin. And it's an organochlorine insecticide, which was widely used until the 1970s, when it was banned in most of the countries, including the US. Prior to the ban, it was used in pesticides to treat seeds, soil, and termites. And it's a potential occupational carcinogen. It has a slow solubility in water. And um, it exacerbates um, its persistence in the environment. It's extremely toxic to fish and sea life. OK. Um, and this is an addition. There's arsenic on that list and other chemicals that I really you know, didn't research. 
but I wanted you to have some idea of the familiar uh, chemicals that we had. I gave you another paper um, with the telephone number and the uh, email address of the administrator of the quality program regarding um, the EPA and the D, uh, FVRC. Now, the, the department's supposed to meet on a monthly basis. I think it's the last Thursday of every month. They had one meeting, uh, very few meetings in two years, and the last one was in December, because now they're going to approve the minutes at this uh, July 26th meeting. Uh, there's seven seats to be filled. Uh, the governor only filled five of them. And the two seats that weren't filled were the local governments and the environmental community. That was left empty. So I think, and um, this coming Saturday, this has to do with the algae bloom. Somebody organized a uh, uh, event up at uh, uh, Port Mayaka, Florida, which is around Lake Okeechobee. It's about an hour and a half from here. And it's going to run from around 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the afternoon. If anybody's interested, I could give them information. And if there's any questions, you could email me or call me, and I'll be happy to answer them or direct you to somebody that can. Thank you, Ms. Aronofsky. Our next speaker is Noel Hollingsworth. Noel Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Uh, six years ago, three residents of our town went to the town administration and brought forth the horse show, which is in December. Those three individuals were December Laurentino Haynes, who takes care of inside the rink and all of the show's uh, permutations because she knew about horse shows. Gay Chaples took care of notifying all the barns and getting the volunteers for the show. And Joanne Hollingsworth, my wife, took care of the funding for the show because the rules that were set up by the town administration was that there should be no government money used for this show, and there could be no charge for the entrance to the show or the, the uh, general public coming to the show because of the rules of the park. Years one and two had a budget of $2,500. Year three, we lost our single sponsor, and Joanne went out and got sponsors for a little bit more than $3,000. Year four, budget was increased by negotiation with the town administrator to $5,000. But year four, they went over budget by approximately $160 of taxpayer money. For year five, Joanne went out and got additional sponsors to make up the $160 and live a buffer on top of that. And year five, when the audit was done and delivered to her in March, town had spent almost $1,700 additional over budget of taxpayer money and did not replace the $160 from year four. She asked for a meeting with Marty to go over it, and Mr. McKay was present. And I was not present, but she was present. She came back very disheartened with the results of that meeting. And Mr. McKay told us that in his discussions with the town administrator that he will deal with a organization that completely runs the show, or the town completely runs the show, but a hybrid is not acceptable, which is a combination of town and volunteers. May I continue? The second strength, 
strain of thought was this hybrid. And I think that is self-indicative all by itself. And the third thing was that in the beginning, one of the criteria was that no town staff would be used and only a couple of hours of printing and that sort of stuff and design of flyers would be done by town staff and that is it. Years one, two, and three was entirely volunteer staff. Not staff, but individuals, volunteers of our town. Year four, there was some paid individuals, including the town staff, because they got a day off, paid day off, but if they came to the horse show. Last year, there were no volunteers whatsoever. It was 100% paid staff and vendors hired by the town. And when the volunteers showed up, they were told they were not needed. Their position had been replaced with a paid individual. This was the final straw. Joanne has worked with her, herself trying to figure out what to do. It has given her great distress because she believes in the horse show, believes that it is a signature event of this horse show for this town. It is the only one like it in the country. And I have asked everyone I have known that it shows across the country if they've ever heard or seen or know of a horse show that is free to the contestants and free to the public. And the answer is no. And when last year when people showed up that had never shown before, they, were, they had their checkbook out and they didn't know anything about it. But Joanne's decision is this. She can no longer rightfully say that it is a volunteer event and therefore it has to be totally run by the town and financed by the town. She will no longer go out and get the sponsors because it is not what it is supposed to be. And I apologize to you if this is late in the budget scene, but the town will now either do one of two things. You will either finance it to the rate that the town administrator says and desires, or it's dead. And that is the bottom line. She is taking her sponsorship capabilities to another organization in another municipality where she is appreciated and desired and, and wanted. There is no fiscal restraint on this. It was seen by the town administrators. No, we got to wrap it up, no. It was seen by the town administrators administration as a bucket with a bottomless pit and they could ladle out anything they want. $10,000 is not what this horse show should cost and $5,000 is not even that either. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. That concludes public comment, Richard. Thank yeah. you very much. Item number four, board reports. Any members, any uh, boards, any updates, any information? Seeing none, item four is uh, complete. Item number five, council uh, member comments. I'll, listen, I'll start off. I don't have a problem doing that. Something uh, different. Just real quickly, a couple comments. Um, I know that we had uh, this discussion and there's uh, uh, information out there that Coral Gables potentially has an EMS unit. Um, and again, not anything other than to confirm or find out if in fact that is indeed uh, uh, what reality is. I've reached out to the commissioner that I s that was suggested that I uh, contacted on two different occasions. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to uh, establish um, a personal communication. I've left a couple of uh, messages via his uh, voicemail, but uh, as soon as I hear something, I promise you that I will let you know. Just to uh, give you a confirmation whether or not it's even available and it's something they want to donate. I heard that it was too large and there were some other issues, a five-year-old unit. A lot of things are out there, but I just called uh, just to see, to get confirmation of what the true story is, and unfortunately um, haven't been able to talk to uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Lago. 
but uh, hopefully sometime in the near future when he uh, gets back in touch with me, I'll give you the status of that vehicle. And one of the most important announcements is uh, the Fisichelli, uh, Fisichelli celebrated 60 years of uh, marriage. Congratulations to the Fisichelli. God bless you, Freddie. It's, uh, you know, you guys just get, uh, it's like a bottle of wine. You just get better with age. What can I tell you? But congratulations. 60 wonderful, glorious years. Wonderful, wonderful uh, family. Okay, with that being said, that concludes uh, my comments. I'm Gary, good. I'm good. You ready? You're good, Gary. I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> Doug, get this mic turned on. Um, one main thing, real quick. The school advisory board for our scholarship funds and donations. Uh, we had discussed it, I guess, last year after everything was done. And what, whether we call it a, a you know, a scholarship fund or whatever we name it, is we can change the name of it if we want. But I was under the impression that this board had decided that all we had to do was accept the fact that they were enrolled uh, in school, or, you know, permanently enrolled in school, whether it was college, high school, wherever they were, up to the age of 25. And that that's all they had to give us proofs of to get the money. Well, we're back to this year of requiring Requiring, and I don't know if it was a misunderstanding that uh, Andy got or Marty got or Keith got or how it got to where it was, but we turned around and did the exact same thing this year on requiring receipts and uh, for money. So if the, if the amount of money you get is $1,000 and you turn in a receipt for 500 that's the only money you get unless you turn in additional receipts. And I was under the impression because of what we discussed we didn't know if they needed new tires on their car to get to school or if they needed gas or needed some clothes or needed a laptop, that that wasn't an issue as long as we proved that they were permanently enrolled in school. So that was the understanding I thought we were going with to require to be turned in to get whatever the amount of the scholarship was, provided they met all the other criteria of the application. So I'd like this council to conjure me on this to clarify that that's what, what our thought was, and whether Andy can jump in or whoever else can jump in on what we were requiring, because that, that, that was my understanding of it. Uh, I, I'm just gonna jump in real fast. I remember we had the discussion. I don't remember that we took any kind of a formal vote or a resolution. I think it just kind of stayed the way it was. That's my recollection. Me, personally, I'm a fan of having a receipt that shows that you have spent something on school supplies, school whatever, and it's pretty broad based. I mean, it covers everything from meal plans to dorm to, uh, you know, transportation to what have you. I just think it's a real, th the, here's, here's a key feature. This is 100% funded through donations. Agreed. And it, there's, there's no money from the town really or anything like that. And we can tell the donors that this goes strictly for students and their ed education supplies and, and whatever they need to get them there. And I think that's a big selling point, you know, on this. I, at least in my world it is, where I live on donations, people come to me for donations all the time, or well, what have you. One of the things that came up in conversation a, a, at a couple of different meetings we had is you don't know if the, what financial uh, position the parents enter in or the students or whether they're locally going to school or like I said, whether they buy, need to buy tires for their car to get there or put gas in their car to get there. Whatever they or, or clothes to go to school, I don't know, but I'm just saying, we weren't making it, or we talked about not making it that they have to turn in all these receipts. So, I don't know if there's a cutoff or a deadline or whatever, but I'm I've learned just recently that there's some students from last year that didn't get any of it because they didn't turn in any receipts or something. I'm I'm not clear on exactly what happened there, but some of the kids that qualified or whatever didn't turn anything in. So I don't know if it was related to school stuff or whatever. But uh, I, I guess what I was getting at is ours wasn't attached to other things. I was under the impression if you met the qualifications and you were enrolled in school to go. So if we're gonna do that, that's just a little different than where I thought we were going. Yeah, Mayor, if I, if I can provide some of the history and, and uh, certainly, l l let me par let me uh, preface this. This is a, a purely a policy decision up to the council. However, th this was something that, that both Marty from an audit standpoint and Keith from a legal standpoint 
had some very strong feelings about, and I know Keith isn't here this evening to speak for himself, so I'm certainly hesitant to try to do that, but I do want to just point out that, uh, that he did have some very strong feelings. We went back, the Vice Mayor's correct, he brought it up last year, but Russell and I went back and we reviewed the audio uh, from that and the video from that council meeting, and there was mention of relaxing those, those conditions, but there was no motion, there was no consensus, there was uh, just a, a very, there was a, a comment by the Vice Mayor, and if I remember correctly, there may have been some additional comments, but there was, there was certainly no clear consensus from watching that meeting to change that. So the School Education Advisory Board had gone back and they had, they had I have their minutes from the November meeting, uh, which one of the discussion items is the scholarship was reviewed and some amendments were made. And I have the application package of which for this year's scholarships, which, which spells out those terms and conditions, obviously subject to council change. Uh, but just one more thing I wanted to add to, because we went back and did the research, Vice Mayor mentioned that some students didn't receive their funding last year. There were two students who did not receive the funding. And the reason they didn't receive the funding is one of them enlisted in the military, so he was not in college, was therefore not eligible. The other who did not receive funding decided not to go to college. So drop that as, as so, so the two who did, so everybody who did go to school that turned in their receipts rece received their, their reimbursement. So from a, a history standpoint, I just, I just want to be clear on that. Uh, the conditions that were in the scholarship application for this year that, that the students submitted says uh, scholarship monies will be awarded once enrollment has been confirmed in a post-secondary vocational technical institution or community junior college to be used towards tuition books and related fees. Funds will be dispersed directly to the recipient. Scholarship monies will be reimbursed up to the scholarship amount for the following school expenses, tuition, student housing, food plan, books slash school activities or supplies, I'm sorry, student activity fees, parking fees, and lab fees. So that's what the School Education Advisory Board had put together. That was part of the package that went out there for the students this year. Ultimately, this council can determine, uh, obviously, whatever direction you want to take. Uh, but that, that was what was in the scholarship application this year. That's the minutes from School Education Advisory Board meeting from last year. And, uh, the answer on the students who didn't receive the funds. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy just from a history standpoint or the documentation to share that with you, but otherwise it's uh, council policy. Thanks, Marty. Council, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Gary, and I, uh, I agree. Um, I think it's important that there is um, accountability with regards to the expenses. That's what, it's, uh, that's what it's for. Listen, my daughter was fortunate to get a couple of uh, scholarships. She never saw the money. It uh, was uh, That's deposited. The right, the real ones, right? No, they pay direct. Yeah, but uh, you know, one was a thousand, the other was like two thousand dollars. But it went right to the the school, right. um, and she never saw any of it. And as a result of that scholarship, they still had to get confirmation from the school that she was a student there, and what the money was being uh, spent for. So I think it's important that there is a uh, a confirmation of uh, of a legitimate uh, school expense. And I think that it uh, certainly delineated on that application form, and it was vetted by the Education uh, Committee, and they thought it was appropriate uh, um, methodology with regards to how these scholarships are rewarded. And the other thing that's real important to me also is obviously the feedback from uh, Keith and from, uh, from a legal perspective and from uh, Marty from a financial perspective with regards to the accounting of, uh, of that money specifically for uh, these uh, college expenses. Yeah, Keith, on the legal perspective, so I would rather us do what you said, secondary, that your daughter's getting, the, because he believes we could raise a lot more money uh, towards that, towards scholarship and donation to paying monies. But a lot of times, having that kind of scholarship money to pay, be paid directly to the school and stuff may help long-term for the kid or whatever. Sometimes, you know, it's not a reimbursement, they'll pay it. But a lot of times, you don't know if the kid's got the money to pay his rent, the gas to get, you know, that kind of stuff. A laptop for him at school or his crashes or whatever the case may be. But the school advisory board had discussed and talked about not having to have all those requirements. So I don't know how they all got back in there. And uh, Yvette, I'm sure, is aware of that and can, could speak to it or whatever. But people on that board, and, you know, I'll get a consensus from them on what they inspected or talked about last time from last year's stuff to thought it was going to be changing this year. 
And then when I went and looked into it, somebody else had called me, actually two people called me, and said, they're asking for all these other receipts again. They said, if you turn in receipts and the, it's only up to seven or $800, that's the only money you're getting if it's even 1000 or $1,200. So you've got to turn in receipts. So if you want people to create receipts, that's just another thing. But, so I don't know how long the window is open to turn in receipts to get your money. I guess that's my other backup question. If you're going to continue to do it that way, and and and, and Doug, I wasn't using my uh, my my no, daughter as uh, saying, as an example, but it was the uh, the requirement of the of that entity that uh, provided the uh, scholarship. Right. I don't have any issues with how it's uh, currently uh, set up. And the other thing too, if it takes times with regards to accumulating those receipts, listen, I wish my daughter was going to school for six hundred or thousand uh, dollars. A year, I can uh, assure you, between uh, um, tuition and housing and food and sorority um, uh, fees, it's uh, excessively clothes, more. Uh, the apps, oh, yeah. well, clothes, you know, that's our responsibility, and I don't think that it will be uh, covered. And I understand that if somebody's in that kind of uh, predicament, but I feel, and I agree with uh, Gary, I feel very comfortable with uh, the rules that uh, and how they're set up. Uh, how they're set up now. If there's an extenuating uh, circumstance, you know, come to the council and ask for an exception and the reason for the exception. But at least it's been thoroughly vetted. We're aware of it. And there is uh, accountability with regards to uh, the expenditures of, uh, of those funds. Steve? Um, I, I tend to agree with, with the, the flavor of where this conversation is going. You know, um, having put three daughters through college, and my wife is still going to school. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> it does not take long. But if, she's if you're paid to go to school, not paying to go to school. No, she's paying. She's doing both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. um, but it does not take long at all to accumulate the expenses. If you're a full-time student, within 30 days, you, you, you wish that that scholarship covered all your expenses. So I just don't see... I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see a problem to fix, to be honest with you, um, because if, if you're a genuine student, you're going to have those receipts. And so I, 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 don't, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't see a problem that needs fixing, I guess is the best way I'd put it. Any other uh, comments? I know there's uh, discussion on it. I uh, uh, have these comments, all uh, constructive, that's for sure. OK. Doug, are you uh, I'm good. good? Freddie, no comment. Steve? Yeah, just uh, one, one quick comment, actually. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, ask Andy to do something, but I wanted to make sure that we had the consensus of the council to do that because I think it's important. Um, as you all are well aware, the, uh, the school is, that ch new charter school is due to open well out, out west here, and now it's just, uh, you know, 60 days away. It's right around the corner. So... Um, what I would like for uh, Andy to do, um, you, you all are probably also well aware that we did a traffic count uh, last March to get a baseline of what the original was. I would like for Andy to do a traffic count um, first week of school, maybe the first two weeks of school, so that we can see uh, exactly what the, uh, what the impact is. So if you all are on board Not with issue. that. On board. Just one question is, do you think a month later would be better? I, and it's strictly from a statistical point of view. Um, I, I'll tell you the, um, I would rather not go into that. I'll just say I think this, that would be the right time to do it. Okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm on yeah, board. No, I, not, not that I just. I don't want to get in that discussion. I'll, uh, yeah, I'm with I, you. I'd rather. <laughs> I think I have an idea where you're coming from, yeah, Steve. I, and, 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 I agree, and, I, and I agree with you. <laughs> so, Andy, it uh, looks like uh, unanimous. That's something that's important. You're right. Just out there, and uh, it, they're 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 going to be ready uh, to rock horrible. and roll in August. No question about that. Horrible. And it's going to be a uh, cluster, just like we uh, predicted. I feel sorry for the people out uh, west that they're going to be subjected to. And I feel sorry for the people that are signing up to have their kids go to that school because they have no idea nope. for the major traffic headache that they are signing up for. And from the charter school's perspective, I know that they got a good reputation, but you are absolutely right, uh, Steve, what uh, is going to go on out uh, there with regards to traffic and those traffic issues and all the other ancillary uh, things associated with the school that draws a lot of people. 
you know, it's just not going to be in the morning and the afternoon, you know, when they arrive and they're dismissed. You have all the activities throughout the course of the day and potentially at night. It's, uh, it's going to be crazy. But uh, that concludes council member uh, comments. Moving on to item number six, legal comments. Richard? No legal comments tonight, Mayor. Just happy to be here. Thanks. Great. Great to have you and always a pleasure to see you, Richard. Item number seven. Administration comments, Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I actually didn't have anything tonight, but uh, there was something I uh, brought up before that I just I did want to address for a moment. Uh, there were comments made from the floor about the horse show and, and comments and decisions that were attributed to administration going back to the beginning of the horse show. I've been here four years. A lot of that goes back before me. I certainly can't speak to decisions made by uh, you know, administrators that predated me here as far as the four years that I, that, uh, that I have been here. I'll say my interpretation may, may differ a little bit from Mr. Hollingsworth. I don't wish to debate it publicly, but I do want to put that on the record. So thank you. Thank you, Andy. That concludes item number seven. Item number eight, uh, a resolution for the record, please. Russell. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an agreement in the amount of $40,936.86 with Amroad LLC to complete the Sterling Road Striping and Signage Project, authorizing the Mayor, Town Administrator, and Town Attorney to enter into an agreement and providing for an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy, to you for an explanation. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, the Mayor. As you know, we've had issues uh, and complaints from the neighborhood on traffic on Sterling Road. We've been working on that. We've tried to address some of that with rumble strips and guardrails. One of the things that we need to do is redo the striping, putting some no-passing zones, some other things like that, update and improve the signage over there. And we had, we had put a lot of that off till we got the initial guardrail run done. We've gotten that done. We've gone out to bid on that. Uh, we believe we've gotten a, a very favorable price back from, uh, from the vendor on this. And we ask that you approve it so we get that project underway. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Council? Motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second to, uh, to approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Noah Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. I agree this project needs to be done, but at the same time, we knew this project was coming along last budget year, so it's not in this year's budget. And this is an additional add-on to the budget. I would like to see a better budget built for the next year, which takes in all of these things that are going to be done and have to be done, so we don't have any surprises. And this is basically we're dipping into the general fund now to add on to it. So our budget is not saying that it's balanced. It's unbalanced in the sense that what we said last year, what our budget was going to be, this year is now adding more to the cost side. And I'd like to see a better budget built so we have everything in the budget that's going to be taken care of and we know is coming down the road but at the same time we can have these additionals when there is an emergency type situation this is not an emergency type situation this is something that needs to be done and it needs to be done as soon as possible for the residents in that area and to straighten out some problems and that's good but at the same time we knew this was happening last year Thank you. Uh, D. Schroeder, 5501 Thoroughbred Lane. Uh, I need some clarification. You said Sterling Road. How far from the east to the west is that? Is, is that the all the way out west? I mean, there's a whole section that's Davy, isn't it? So the price just seemed a little bit ouch, but um, I'd like to know from point A to point B, what that included. Thank you. Any other public comment? See no further public comment. Public comment is uh, now closed. Again, we have a motion and a second to uh, approve. And uh, Andy, just for the record, only because I did read the uh, backup, it, it was budgeted in the amount of $130,000 in the municipal transportation fund expenditure, along with the account and the account uh, number. So if I'm misreading of that and it wasn't uh, budgeted for this year, then then tell me if it wasn't no, accounted correct, for. This is not it's not coming from reserves. This is a budgeted expense. Okay. And and to answer the other question, if I may, it's from our eastern boundaries of our town to to uh, Volunteer Road. Okay. Thank you. 
Again, we have a motion to second to approve council. Any other additional questions or any questions, comments, or concerns? Nope. Seeing none, motion to second to approve. Call the question, please, Russell. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Breitkruz? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number nine. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending usage policies for the Rolling Oaks Park, governing rental use of the exterior areas, meeting room, and community room, establishing a fee schedule including rental of exterior areas and attendant fees, and providing an effective date. Thank you, Russell. Andy? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, as you know, we've had the, the barn has been completed for a period of time now, and we've been renting it out. Uh, there have been you know, some issues that have been raised, some concerns by the community, and, and so with that year or so of experience of renting that facility out, we wanted to go back and, and, and certainly revisit those terms and conditions, the rental policy. And so this was kicked to the Parks Board to, to vet the residents' concerns and, and, and to seek out opportunities to improve and, and better the policy where it is. You know, you have, you, obviously you all, you all have it there. But uh, I know December is here and can certainly speak to the process and, and the individual aspects of it because uh, this is obviously near and dear to her heart. She's been very involved with it with the Parks Board. Mayor. Thank you, Andy. Gary? Yeah, I have a, uh, I have a comment. Um, all this has been vetted by the uh, uh, Parks Board and uh, with public in with resident in input. Um, as you know, we, we take our park, our first park was the equestrian park, and we uh, made rules for it and then we've kind of taken that and, and copied it and moved it over to the next park and to the next park and we have like three main parks now that that can host large gatherings uh, the equestrian park rolling oaks park and the uh, country estates park um, the equestrian park was uh, was our first park and it suffered some abuse unfortunately with uh, horse camps and after school activities and things of that nature and we came up with some um, fairly strict usage on it and uh, and it's worked and it's worked well um, and then we had the uh, Rolling Oaks Park come along online and we basically figured out that okay this park we're going to be a little bit lenient more a little more different because it's got an indoor structure uh, it's got different rental it's got different rooms things of that nature and, and it's much larger it's like you know uh, it's a lot of wide open spaces that's now the area for the uh, hazmat and that's the area for the hurricane turnout for uh, any any horse anywhere actually you bring it in it doesn't matter if you live in town or not no. air conditioned bathroom I'm sorry air conditioned bathroom yes it has air conditioned bathroom <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is kind of nice um, but one of the, one of the things that we transported and I'd like to to, to tweak if if with the blessing of the council is uh, the requirement that we have uh, where we have a limit of ten people uh, on any kind of an organization where it requires a permit. And it served its purpose in the equestrian park, but we're encouraging at Rolling Oaks with the open fields, and we'll have this conversation with, with country estates at a later date, but this is just strictly Rolling Oaks. And I'm, um, I'd like to see that number increase to like 20, uh, just because I think if you got two pickup games of soccer going on in the open field or stickball or what, what have you, you've exceeded that max already with with just kids you know there's no there's no basketball courts or anything like that but just the open playing field area I think we would be more uh, conducive and I know uh, it's been a, a, a an item with Astor if his family shows up he's exceeded the limit <laughs> you know on that and and it's a very valid point you know and I was just wondering if we'd like to if we'd like to push it to uh, 20 I would like to I would like to see that tweaked you know to that I, but I, I would like to hear your thoughts see what I personally don't have an issue pushing that to 20 at that facility and this is just for this park. This yeah, is not. This is not in any other park. So, I, I have a question. So, um, I'm sure it's in there. I, I just hadn't ever thought about that aspect of it before. So this may be a dumb question, but um, my understanding is that when someone gets a permit, they're getting a permit so that they have exclusive use of a particular part of the park. So, and pay money. And pay money for it. Yeah. But so if somebody shows up, you know. Aster brings the family over there. Okay, he's got more than 10. Um, I would not think that he would be required to have a permit then unless he wanted to, like, reserve one of the rooms or have exclusive use of a part of the thing. Then he would need a permit. That, that was my understanding all along. That you, you, could, you could come over there with 50, you know, guys or girls to play, you know, a pickup game of football, and you're fine. 
But if somebody else reserved that part of the park, then you got to give way because you didn't reserve it. That was my understanding. Yeah, but that's not what the language. The way it reads. Yeah, well, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Assembly. That's why. That's why I'm saying it might be a dumb question because that's not <laughs> no, the way it not reads. Dumb, but <laughs> but I think that that was kind of always my intent. Not that I don't want to do anything to discourage people from using the parks. That's what they're there for, you know. Um, but if somebody has a special event. People are coming in, and they, you know, they need to know that that space is available. That's what a permit is for. So I'm all for, you know, upping the amount. I mean, I'm, if you, if you, if you catch my drift, I'm not sure it needs a, a permit at all. It needs a number at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, reserving an area for a particular unless you're reserving an area for a particular, yeah. So you, you're saying take the 10 people out? You say to not have a number. Uh, well, what I'm saying is that's my thought off the cuff. I don't want to go, you know. I would be welcome to hear what the board has I, to say on it and things like that. But I think you're headed in the right direction. I think, the, I think December can probably speak more to this because she deals with this on a regular basis for us. But I believe that if we, if we have a number on there and it says 20 for conversations so, and you go a little over, that's one thing. But I think uh, we're trying not to encourage if there's a number and you can do – people said there's not a limit if you didn't reserve it, but more people might show up to not – not pay to use the park and you know they may leave trash behind or a bunch of other things so so there's a scenario of things so i i would personally like a little input from december on this if we may <laughs> um both of you gary december haynes pros coordinator um both gary and steve very adequate and and you vice mayor as well adequately characterized the situation um, yes, we did adapt this from the equestrian park where there were some specific issues. Um, no, it's not completely germane to Rolling Oaks with its more than double the size. Um, Steve, you're actually right. The um, reserve use of any facility at Rolling Oaks Park is, is going to be, you know, pretty obvious because it's mostly interior, although we're adding some exterior areas. But in none of these parks do we have a proactive policing. So if Astor's family decided to go over to the equestrian park and they had more than 10 people that day, nobody is going to throw them out. But if they decided to go to the equestrian park and set up a picnic in the pavilion and maybe tell some other folks that were there, could you mind, do you mind, we're going to use this now, that's where we draw the line. And those kind of things will a lot of times come to us either after the fact or during the event. So it's not something that, it's usually not planned. You, you guys are all sitting around watching the game and you know, somebody says, hey, it's a beautiful day, let's go outside. Nobody's going to stop you from spreading your blanket out and eating your sandwiches in the shade of the trees, but you shouldn't be there to stop anyone else from exercising their horse or, or the, the characteristic activities that happen out there. People go out there with their dogs and do trainings and they have birds that they fly and other, but, but uh, the language that's in there, if it could be tweaked and changed and made better, I welcome you guys input on that. But I don't, I'm not necessarily in favor of taking it out altogether, just because the more control that we have, now we're able to sort of waive rules and you know be more reasonable with people but we still have the footing and it's by virtue of being here tonight that we do that so I wouldn't necessarily make rules more lenient we've yeah some issues. we have also if we don't have any rule at all and people want to go up go and show there with 50 people and they decide that they haven't made a reservation with the town, so we don't know that they're out there and they decide that they're going to do their party or their game or whatever in the back of the barn on the south side. That's going to be an issue for the very residents that we've become so sensitive to their issues already. So it doesn't Mayor, hurt I to may. make them call us. Uh, do, you, do you personally have an issue of us changing that number from no. 10 to 20? No, sir. Okay. I'm good with that. December, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Ready, you have any? Andy, I see you. Yeah, just, just as we're going along with this, because I know there, there are some other points that may come up for discussion, so I just want to kind of build consensus as we go. Okay. It sounds like council's in favor of upping the number from 10 to 20. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. You okay with that, Freddie? Yeah. 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 You okay, Freddie, with that? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other additional questions, comments, or uh, concerns, uh, council? Did I open it to public comment? I think I did, didn't I? It was, no. I did not. I apologize. 
I apologize. Before we uh, finalize it, let's get the public input if there's anybody that wants to provide additional input. Again, we have a motion to second approve. Any members of the public wish to comment on this item? There's been no motion. Oh, there hasn't been a motion? We didn't get a motion in the second approve? No, not yet. Phew. I apologize. No, you're going to have to wait a second. Council, I'll take. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with the modification. I'll second. I'm just so accustomed that we're debating it that it's already been uh, a motion made and approved. So we do have a motion and a second to approve. It is official, Newell. It's open to public comment, and you're our first <laughs> commenter. Uh, Newell Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Uh, if you'll go to page 117, which is Exhibit A, Rolling Oaks Park Policy, and go down to Parks Policy Prohibited Activities, number seven, the standard that we use in our town is must be approved by the town administrator, our designee. We have argued this quite a lot in other areas uh, on the comp plan. And if you use town staff, if someone wants to scam the town, they walk in and ask the volunteer at the front desk, I want to play football at the park and uh, have a good day walk on out and if they say yes to that that is a town staff therefore they have uh, authorization to play a game of football and bring and sell tickets to it etc cetera, etc cetera. so you have to have the town administrator all the way through this document you see this I stopped at this and I called uh, the chair of the parks board and I said look I'm not going any further into this I found one big glaring error that has a problem to it it has to be looked at and I don't think Keith has looked at this because he would have caught it unless he hasn't if that's the case then uh, I expect when he comes back to go Noel is right uh, so this has to be reviewed before you approve it because the, all of these scriber errors if you want to call it are in there and as to the number of people in the park and facilities use for someone like Steve was saying just goes to the park with 10 people or 15 people or 20 people and we have families that are when they have it are bigger than that so you know and someone can come along and throw them out from the staff but anyway, this needs to be reviewed. You should table it until it is reviewed and the corrections made and the standards that have been accepted over the years at our town are placed within it. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yep, you got two more. Astro 9, 5480 Southwest 170th Avenue. But since uh, my family is the standard, <laughs> then, uh, I, I, heard they throw you. then I have agree a great with raising it from 10 to 20. <laughs> I thought of not just leaving no numbers there, but I think a number is a good thing to have. At least you have some base with which to work. So I agree with that part of it. And I think the rest of it, well, I don't know what um, comment is, that can be looked into. But I think what we have there is pretty good. Thank you. Where, where is he even seeing that? Where is he? David Kaczynski, Holiday Trail. Um, no, no, no. Item 9 is um, kind of confusing, where it says, it begins with children shall be supervised at all times. Then we change the thought to any person or persons violating and so on. It sounds like you got two different thoughts in this uh, one paragraph. If there were just a formatting error, I don't know. But another paragraph probably make it much more clearer. Then following the following line, um, any persons violating the amenity, rental, or park rules and regulations, or and in the opinion of the town, that town needs to be clarified um, as to who do they mean by the town. And, um, that concludes my questions. Thanks. Any other public comment? 
See no more public comment. Public comment is now uh, closed. Back to you, Council, for uh, final deliberation. Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I had a few items that I uh, I picked out. I, I do I do want to echo. I didn't I didn't pick that one up, but uh, I think uh, um, those ha what we heard were good comments. It should be I believe the town administrator um, is the proper terminology there in uh, breaking those two items apart. I think makes sense as well. Um, but aside from that, there's a couple of them on that same page, uh, page 118. Um, there's a couple different time frames there. One is uh, talks about that uh, the event must end. Number six there it says the event must end by 11 p.m. and they have until 12, 12 midnight to clean it up. Um, that sounds fine. Um, but I'm curious on the next one it gives, you know, the, it, on Sundays, however, it must end by 6 and you have two hours to clean it up. I, I don't really get that. I think there should be a consistency there. Um, so if we want to do it till 1 in the morning, the other one, or, or 7 o'clock at night, I would go with the 7 o'clock at night, to be honest with you. So that's one recommendation I would make. Uh, on the following page, 119, and uh, maybe one of my recommendations is that we put numbers by these things because you'll never you'll never find the one I'm talking about. But it's uh, it's about it's about a little past halfway down. It's one of the bigger ones. It starts with decorations in the facilities shall exclude uh, so and so and so and so. Um, and then it talks at the very end here. I just think this wording is needs to be cleaned up. Uh, nothing can be it's it's the new part. Nothing can be hung or affixed to the lights drapery. Hardware, drapes, ceiling, or ceiling fans, glitter, sequins, balloons, rice, confetti. I mean, you're not going to be hanging things, confetti from the draperies or the, you know. So I think it's mixing things you're going to hang versus things you're going to throw. Um, that just needs to be cleaned up. And one of the other items that I think should be either expressly prohibited or, al <coughs> or allowed, I think it probably should be allowed, is bird seed. A lot of people, you know, you don't allow them to use confetti or rice or anything like that for a wedding but bird seed is pretty innocuous because the birds clean it up for you <laughs> you know no muss no fuss so but it's not mentioned there i think uh, i don't know what you all think about bird seed but I, to me it's kind of makes sense yeah yeah you know yeah we have re we have a couple resident owls in the barn they might appreciate that. yeah they might think they might <laughs> like it <laughs> so there's that um the uh, uh, the next one is this. You know, these um, some of the fees are going up, which I think is a very appropriate thing to do. But uh, some of the wording that's left over allows for cash. Um, we're talking about a $500 fee and a $500 deposit. Um, somebody walking into town hall with $1,000 cash, that's okay. They can do it. I'm not comfortable with asking anyone on our staff to then walk out of town hall with a thousand dollars cash and walk to you know go to the bank somewhere um, I just I'm not comfortable with that so I personally uh, would prefer if uh, the payment were not by cash um, I think that's a Marty thing I'd ask Marty how they do bank deposits and stuff I don't I don't think he just sends anybody <laughs> that's a good question how do you how do we do if, if somebody walked into town hall with you know, $1,000 to pay this fee, how would it get to the bank? If you want to put that on the record, I don't know if you want to put that on the record or not. He doesn't want to put it on the record. I think that answers my question, though. I think, I, I, yeah, I think that answers my question. So I would prefer to get rid of the cash. I just don't want to put our employees at risk. Um, and then this... Councils, we're moving uh, along. I know Andy is, uh, is is making notes. Would you like to get this resolved with the language now, or you want uh, Andy to uh, write down all the notes and then revise it and incorporate the changes that we're requesting and then bring it back to you? Well, what I'd like to do is throw them out here because I'd like to hear you all's comments. Okay. And maybe I should have stopped with each one. No, no, no. I don't, listen, I uh, I hear you. I'd been right yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but I would rather. I, I, I would rather. I'd rather we pass it tonight and get all this. Yeah, yeah I kind of. Because we can all talk about I'm, it. I'm not talking go. about anything major here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's mostly work. I just want to make. I just what what page are you on with the cash? Just the fee I'm schedule? On, sorry, yeah. I'm on, uh, three. I'm on page 121 under attachment one, uh, item number three. Payments may be by, and then it says credit and cash check. So you, you just want to take the word cash out? I want to take the no word problem. cash out, yes. Agree. That's a good idea. Um, 
Uh, on the, right in that same group there, there's item number five. Uh, this is a new one, credit card transactions require additional processing convenience fee. Uh, this is actually a question I have for legal. Um, most credit card agreements that you sign when you get credit cards will not allow you to do this. Um, they will not allow you to charge a fee, an, uh, an up, you know, kind of an up fee for credit cards. Um, so we would need to check our credit card agreement well, to see I, if that's I believe all we take is square anyway. As far as a credit it's card, not, it's not going to be. It's not going to be who you take it from. It's going to be your credit card merchant processor Got in it. the background. Okay. That's going to be. Yeah, in, in my line of work, you're not allowed to do this. Yeah. Okay. So I, I would be. I would we be, used to do it. and We had to stop. Exactly. Right, so why, don't, why don't we just tell them to eliminate ago. it? I would why just, give them an option. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we just strike that? Okay. That's. I'm. I'm more comfortable striking it. Okay. Um. And uh, so then that's that for that. So in attachment two, uh, about a third of the way down in attachment two, it talks about uh, uh, the little sentence starts off, facility will be rented, and then in parentheses it says circle one um, or all. Well, there's three options there. You know, this is not a big deal. It's just poorly worded. There's three options. So I, you should circle the, the one or more that's, that are correct. Your, your option shouldn't be circling one or all three. You may have two that you want to circle. Yeah, so. Mayor, there, there had originally been two options, and a third yeah. was, was added, and that language wasn't cleaned up. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, that just needs to be not a, not a big deal, just minor. Um, and then over on page. Council member, can I? Go, go ahead, Andy. I, I apologize, but I just want to make sure we're on the same page. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I yeah. You've rolled through a few of these, and I, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Good. I know there was some discussion about the interior needed to be done by 11, cleaned up by 12. Exterior was done by 6, cleaned up by 8. Right. You had expressed to clean up by 7. By 7. The only reason that we had gone for two more hours on the exterior, sometimes people are a little bit more extensive than some of the things that they may do in display, but, but certainly if council the consensus the council wants to change that to seven. I have no problem with it. I just wasn't sure where we left that item, and I want to make okay. sure I have that one put to bed. Okay. Are they better cleaners on Sunday, or they take a little <laughs> longer than on uh, a weekday? Well, if it's an outside display, they, they may be more extensive in, in what they have for their event. That was part of the like Yeah, when we get, tense. December, when we get through this, I know that you're taking some notes. We absolutely want your yes. input with regard to these recommendations. Yeah. I only got like one or two more, and then I'm done. Oh, okay. All right. So let me let me just do that, and then I have two more, and then I I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Uh, the next one is on page 123. Um, it's the same thing. It says uh, circle type of remittance has credit, check, cash. So we want to delete that cash as well. And then my final, and this is a question that's not necessarily a change. Matter of fact, I, I think it's probably fine the way it is, but I just want to understand it. Um, on page 124, where we're talking about all the fees, uh, one of those fees, which I, I, I welcome, um, I, uh, you know, uh, I think it was my suggestion, but I think it's a great, uh, I think it's a good idea, is um, it talks about the attendant fee, and it says uh, $32 an hour. I was just curious. I just want to make sure that that, where the basis of that is. I want to understand where that number came from. I don't think, I think the number's probably right on. So, um, so. Yeah, if, if, if I may address That's that. my last question. Go That's ahead. Ba based on the vendor that we have, the contractor we have that we utilize for parks, opening and closing, maintenance, it's their hourly rate, and there is a, a little bit of a multiplier on there uh, just to allow for if there's excess, a little more time. But l let me be very clear on that, that attendant. That's not necessarily something that's going to be attached to every rental. If we have a, a, a new renter or an event that we think may be potentially a problem, uh, that's something that we want to have. In, it's, it's a tool we want to have in our toolbox for recurring renters, for people that we've had that we haven't had issues and we, don't, and we haven't had problems. We don't necessarily uh, plan to have an attendant for every single event. But that's up we, for we you to. We want to have that option when we need it. Uh, but that's not necessarily for every rental. Is that, that based on December's time. recommendation and you to waive? Then, yes. <laughs> yeah, we got to do one yeah. at a time. We're actually, talking over actually, each other. Actually, okay. if I may, can, I, I'd like to let December speak to this Absolutely. a little bit because she was part of that deliberative process with the board, if, okay. if that's all right with you, Mayor. No, that's, uh, that's fine. 
Hi. So, um, yes, this was absolutely a beginning suggestion that started here at a council meeting, and I thought it was a really good idea, and it's um, something that other uh, organizations, agencies do. Uh, they will require a tenant, but many, um, when we compare ourselves to where did all these ideas come from is what do other places do? Other places that are like us and other places that are bigger. And many um, park facilities, unlike ours, are manned anyway. So you've got staff on site during the times that events are happening. We have someone who comes to check them in and check them out and is not on site. So your suggestion to have an attendant for parties to make sure that they stay in line during their party was a good one um, and particularly applicable because of that situation. Um, our contract rate already stipulated for this kind of service prior to us having this discussion. I confirmed it with our contractor who understands the rules and, and is well familiar with the way that the building is being used. And um, in the discussion about the attendant fee, it's not meant to be punitive, but the reason that we even have a talk about it now is because we've had some pretty big abuses. And we've had some people who money is not their object. They, they'll they save whatever dime that they can, but they're, they're treating this place when they get an, a permit to have a party there as if nobody else cares about it and they don't care about it and they don't care about what's around. So having the attendant serves two purposes, to have somebody who's knowledgeable about the rules and regulations but also gives them a financial incentive to do what they're supposed to do. And at the rate that our contract calls for, that's a very, very minimal amount. And as Andy mentioned, the um, applicability of that particular rule to every party. I don't, I, I find very much safety in the fact that we've got all these rules. And when something needs to be waived, that's my safety. Um, and I don't tell people, oh, you don't have to have the attendant or you don't have to do that or whatever. We start where the rules begin. And when we have proven compliant renters who have rented from us and they've got and exper you know, experienced renters may find it very much easier than somebody who, and nobody comes into the town and says, I'm going to rent your building and I'm going to do whatever the heck I want and I'm not going to, you know, they're all nice. You think they're going to be great. And then they stay an hour and a half too late or they spill wine all over the floor or they have kids running around shouting at 1.30 a.m. They have no respect. They don't get it. This is a contract that they're signing. All of these things are meant to dignify that and to give them the idea that what they're doing here is going to cost them if they break those rules. Mayor, if I may, go ahead, Bill. Do we have the ability, if they're breaking the rules, to shut them down? Of course, okay. of course, through oh, our no trespass agreement there. with Davey. To, unfortunately, normally we don't hear about it until after the fact. I hear so about it. Having, you know, way after the event. He hears about it. <laughs> <laughs> and if I, if I hear about it, then, you know, Town of Davie has been really great. Our, our law enforcement is the, are the ones that would, you know, be the, the strength behind me saying, you're breaking the rules, now you're trespassing, and we're asking you to leave. And if they don't leave, now they could be arrested, you know. Right. I mean, that's. Right. So, um, so my my. I guess my question is that um, I thought this was going to be instituted all the time, but I get what you're saying and it makes sense, so I, I don't disagree with you. But if we go down that route, then it's in critical, I think, that we have some sort of a policy that gives Andy the ability to waive it. It's oh, there. Otherwise, it's otherwise. there. It's on page one. Without a doubt. Where is it? Page I, I, one. I, the last item on page one. Or oh, you don't have it on page one. Yes, sir. Item uh, 15. Item number 15. 15. All the way down to the bottom, last line. Page 117. Mm -hmm. The town council administration uh, at its sole discretion reserves the right to. Yeah, grant that's always been there. Exceptions. I don't know if the town council is appropriate. I don't. And know that, that and that has that has always served us to be able to. We I have. I feel comfortable somebody coming to me and asking for an exemption anyway. I'd refer them to the town administrator. Well, right. We'd all call in. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, th I think it should be administrative. Yeah. 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 Take the town. Take us yeah. out. Yeah. We're taking out town council. Yeah. Yeah. Take out yeah. Town yeah. Town Good council. idea. I mean, it's, it just makes sense. We're we're policy. Make sure it's Andy Burns. He, we're, we're policy. <laughs> He's day to day operations. That's a day to day yep. operations issue. See, Andy, you're their safety too. 
that much. That's right. Okay, cool. That's good. Any other uh, council? We'll go through this one more time just to get confirmation of uh, the changes. Yeah, what we want. Well, I actually let Andy ask because that way he and Steve will be on the same page. So are, yeah, are, are I, we okay with been, these? I mean, absolutely. Like, I just assumed for Steve. Absolutely. With, yeah, yeah. We agree. I, I, these, these are good tweaks. Uh, the, the one I have a question on was the yeah. very first one raised by Mr. Hollingsworth. I, did, I must have been on the wrong page because I wasn't getting it. Uh, um, other than the uh, town staff or designee, if, if just to change that to the administrator, that's already in number 15. We just need to strike that that part because it, if I'm reading it right, it's a posting of signs or notifications, meaning, yeah. you know, so and so's wedding party, here, right, right. you know, or it, somebody's it, birthday. That language appears in a couple of other places, and I'm, I have no problem cleaning that up. Okay. But I wanted to ask a question sure. um, about one of the points that Councilmember Bright Cruz raised and that was about the one hour cleanup. It's not really a question. I just wanted to give you some some idea of where that comes from. So we are not designating one hour as a cleanup time. We are designating an end time for your party and all the noise that's a, around it at 11 p.m. And the residents in the area requested that exterior parties on Sundays end at 6 p.m. However, if you see some of these are big weddings with caterers with chairs and trucks and you know there's a, there's a lot more setup than one hour and so the the cleanup time is not what we're specifying we're specifying the end of the party the end of the music the end of the noise time to go home time to get it all cleaned up if they can do it in an hour great but a lot of times they can't and you know the request of the residents was end by 6 p.m they didn't say what time cleanup was to be for the outside on Sunday. So, you know, realistically, two hours has been a realistic cleanup time for any party. So that was where that came from. I wouldn't want to tell people that they only have an hour to clean up no matter what time we said. Don't they, some of them, the caterers people and stuff, come like the next morning? And if up? they make a reservation for that day. But that's one of those things they really need to do. They can't, a lot of caterers and a lot of people who reserve, reserve the facilities assume that but they're being disabused of that notion because it costs staff time to meet a caterer and caterers don't say I'll meet you at 3 p.m. They say we'll be there between 3 and 5 and they show up at 6. Bounce house people too. Sat out there with you. Dunk tank people too, oh. right? <laughs> so really uh, this then this wording really needs to be cleaned up in another way and this was brought up I think maybe Russell somebody brought this up to me it may have been Russell I don't want to this is this is not my thunder. This is somebody else's thunder that I'm stealing. <laughs> so, um, but the way this is worded in number six, all events held in interior areas must be ended by 11 p.m. And then it goes on. Number seven, all events held in exterior areas on Sundays. Well, what about events held in exterior areas on Saturday? They're fine they with 11 p.m. They can be. That's not what it says, though. The, the residents are fine with, with every other time besides Sunday to end any parties anywhere at 11 okay, p.m. Okay, then we should remove the interior areas off of number six. We, do you have the amended one that we did? We, Russell did bring that up. You're absolutely right, and I prepared a new document for you. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, my notes were on the other one, so. Okay. Okay, good. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you that doesn't show up in the policy because it's not really appropriate to write it there, but um, one of the things that the residents had requested was um, exterior area parties be limited to a certain number per month, which we're going to do um, as, as a recommendation of the Parks Board. Um, that's not, I don't anticipate it being a huge issue. Um, most people don't go to the Rolling Oaks Park to rent the outside areas, right. but we are going to try blackout dates for that. Not specific dates, but as soon as I get the two reservations per month or whatever, then we'll, we'll not have any more availability that month. Okay. Now, are we clear on all the wording? Yeah, one other thing I just want to make you guys aware of, that the residents uh, that abut that are having their own party or wedding coming up. And August they asked, asked us to block out a date, not to reserve the park for that date because they didn't want to be in conflict with them having their party versus the barn having a party. So we are we said yeah. We are accommodating them for that. <laughs> so. Want to go through it? Just uh, Freddie, you have any uh, any comments? 
You don't have okay. any issues with any of the uh, recommended uh, changes. Ready to have any comment? Any any issues? Yep. Just go through it one more time. Just right right from uh, page one. Just to confirm again, uh, item number uh, seven. It must be approved by town administrator or designee. Right. Is that okay. Right. Yeah. The language there and any and anywhere else in All the right. document as well. Same. Okay. Shape. Item number fifteen. Uh, strike the town council. Mm -hmm. Right. Item right. number fourteen. This one. Oh, that's right. Item number uh, fourteen. 14, thank you, uh, Gary. 10 people from 10 to 20. It's right. the Aster Amendment. <laughs> the okay. Aster Amendment, okay. The Aster Amendment. <laughs> uh, the sun, I just want to confirm again, uh, Sunday, is that 7 o'clock? Uh, sounds like 8 o'clock is what uh, they do staff is recommending. They can, but okay. So I'm, I'm, you know. Okay I'm, with that? Yeah, Everybody, fine, anybody fine have any issues with that? Yeah. Okay. I understand so we'll the reason that, now. Uh, status uh, quo uh, the one thing with regards to uh, confetti rice all the other stuff substitute that with bird seed or uh, supplement it with uh, bird supplement. seed. well I, I think bird seed is fine okay. and I think it's you know it would I think it should be listed as fine because bird it's seed just, okay yeah <laughs> okay um, uh oh December has something Come on, December. Go ahead. Item number nine, the the um, point that um, Dave that Dave made about children shall be supervised at all times, and any person or persons, those two can be separated. I've yep. got that noted okay. down as right. well. Right. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. And also the clarification of the word town. I guess the um, clarification there would probably be in in the opinion of the town administrator or designee, if nope. that's appropriate. Yep. Yep. Item number nine on that uh, same page. Okay. Let's see. Um, on the rental fees payment and insurance, item number three, eliminate uh, cash and anywhere it says uh, except cash. Mm -hmm. Item number uh, five, eliminate totally credit card transactions requiring additional it, processing convenience fees. Mayor, Mayor, if I, if I may interrupt, I, I will. I did, do want to point out to you that staff did a tremendous amount of research on that at the time. Uh, Marty was involved in it, Russell was involved in it, Keith was involved in it, and, and we, we do believe under the statute that, that we have the ability to do that. We're, we're happy to strike it, but I want you to know that we, we did research that at the time. That was, it was not, certainly was not added arbitrarily. Which part? Five. The credit card fees. Okay. Page uh, 121. Well, the recommendation was to uh, strike I'd, it for. I'd strike it personally. Yeah, I. I, I, mean, I, I unless think unless you're telling me that we read the point, credit card agreement and it says it's it's you know, not restricted. We're talking then tops three percent. Right. Mean, you know, more than likely around two. But yeah. I'd just say just strike it. Yeah, I'm, I'm more comfortable striking it. Okay. To be honest okay. With you. Okay. And then. Sorry, Marty. We just took money out of your pocket. <laughs> Under uh, attachment uh, two. Facility be rented circle one or, or circle, circle one. all applicable. Yeah, all applicable or ones that apply. Circle one or those that apply or applicable. Applicable. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, the next page eliminate cash where it says circle type of remittance. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. And I think that was it, right? Yep. Everybody. Uh, Good. Satisfy that and confirm that that's the changes. Yeah, until they come up with more. Incorporating this uh, document. <laughs> Andy? Yeah, Mayor, I, we're, we've got all that. I'm good. Just one thing I want I just, I just wanted to bring up. Uh, it was pointed out to me that there's been language that's used in the, has been used in the past that allows some discretion on some of the rate changes, and I'm referring to attachment three right now, where we have the attendant fee, which is calculated based on our, our vendor cost. I may come back to you. I want to talk to Keith when he comes back to see what language he's used in the past. I may come back to ask you at a further date just to amend that to allow some sort of a discretion that, that as, as our contractual rates okay. may dictate. Other than that, all the other fees, the rental fees, everything else, I'll, those would all come to council. Okay. But the contractual rates, I want to be able to adjust if we need to, but I'll bring that back to you separately. Okay. Great. Anything else to council? Only because we made some changes and recommendations, I just want to open it back up to uh, public. If there's any additional public uh, comment after these uh, changes, seeing uh, none, you all did a good job. That's a uh, very good thing. Again, we have a motion and then a second approval. Unless there's any additional questions, um, comments, or concerns, up, I'm sorry, Gary and uh, Steve. I was just going to say I think the motion needs to be amended to approve the. Yeah, 
Right. Uh, it's amended. Yeah. amended. What's, what's the procedure? The second has to be rescinded and then yeah. the motion? Uh, okay. I'll, I'll drop my second. And the maker okay. of the motion? Uh, I would draw my original motion and, and now make a new motion amending with all the amended changes that we have just outlined. I'll second. Okay. Any additional questions, comments, or concerns, Council? Seeing none. Again, we have a motion a second to, uh, to approve with the amendments. Russell, call the question, please. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. Item number uh, 10, the approval of the minutes for the June 9th regular meeting and the June 23rd meeting. Let's do one. Do you want to do one at a time, or we can do them both? I don't think there'll be any any change. I don't care. You got them. Yeah. You've got those changes in in the, what yeah. we got. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, making a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Yeah. I'll second the amended. Russell. Russell has a. Uh, I'm just. I'd just like to clarify that we're making the motion to approve the amended sets of minutes. Correct. Yes. The amended Thank sets of minutes. Thank you. Okay. Motion and second to approve, only because I know that you read them. So, um, any public comment with regards to the approval of the minutes that uh, amended? Seeing none, again, we have a motion to second to uh, approve. Uh, Russell, call the question, or call the question, please. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Fiskelli? Yes. Councilmember Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor McKay? Yes. Mayor Nelson? Yes. That concludes our agenda, Vice Mayor, members of the council, staff, members of the public. With uh, your consensus, I'd like to uh, get a motion to motion approve. Motion to adjourn. And I'm sure it's unanimous. Everybody uh, have a great evening. Drive home safely. Thank you all very much.